G'day everyone, welcome back to Just the Tips for the final round of the 2024 season. It's going to be a juicy one because we're going to see exactly how the ladder is going to end up, obviously assuming I get my tips right, and maybe we'll play around with a few different scenarios in this particular edition. It's exciting. I, uh, there's always a bit of intrigue going into a final round of a season, but there's just so much that can shuffle um, in terms of you know playing finals and which teams get a double chance. Uh, I'm, I'm very excited to cover it. So as always, we'll go through how I went last week. I got five out of nine. Okay, so that's, you know, it's not great, but I think I only dropped one spot in the true footy competition, which just implies that not a lot of people did well. And I don't think anyone got a perfect nine in any of our competitions this week. Tip Sydney right, tip Gold Coast wrong. For the third week in a row, tip Freeman on gotten that wrong. Uh, the Brisbane Lions have got that wrong. So yeah, there was a big streak of four games there that I got wrong with the Cats also going down to St Kilda. St Kilda making me look silly there. Um, playing very good footy at the moment. Port, I backed in in the showdown. I had plenty of doubt about that, so they proved me right. The Bulldogs, Hawthorne, and Carlton. I did very strongly consider tipping West Coast, but I thought, I don't want to jinx them. And my God, I'm glad I didn't. What a shit show that game was. <laughs> anyway, we'll get into how everyone else did in our various competitions. So our members tipping winner this week was Rotorwash with seven correct tips. So there you go, seven to win a round. Very well done, Rotor Wash. General tipping winner this week was Judo Kicks Ass with eight correct tips. Very, very good going. I'm curious to see which one you got wrong this week. There's a number of different contenders there. A margin of 11. The members tipping leader is still Real Swift with 132. It's tied at the top. Well done, Real. You've been there for a while now. And the general tipping leader is Wet Toast Eagles, who I think this is not the first time because I remember reading that username like two weeks ago. 136 correct tips. Outstanding going. And Tully Griffiths, once again, leading the fantasy competition with an average that can, keeps getting bigger with 2166. I had a good week again in fantasy. I moved up like five spots, but I am dog shit at fantasy. So enough said about that. So the round kicks off with what maybe at the start of the season looked like a huge do or die top four clash. And now it is a dead rubber between Melbourne and Collingwood. Collingwood pretty much almost impossible unless they win by about 50 goals. Um, to make the top eight now, thanks to West Coast doing what they do well. So, Melbourne, um, you know what? I, I kind of wrote them off a little bit this year, and I well, I didn't expect them to beat Gold Coast. Not only that, did they, they belted them. So, um, that is a good effort, and I think, you know, if you had reasons to think the wheels were going to fall off a little bit at Melbourne this year, which at times they have, but if you thought they weren't in a position to win games at the end of the season, you might think twice now. They put in a very good performance on the back of Jack Viney and their tall forwards, getting the job done against what was admittedly a disappointing Gold Coast. So that makes me a little bit wary of Melbourne here. Collingwood, on the other hand, um, in the last three games, just off the top of my head, good late win against Carlton. I mean, poor finish to the game, followed up by a poor finish against Sydney, um, and that ended up costing them a game narrowly. But nonetheless, still probably one of the... <sighs> Do I say Sydney's one of the best teams in the comp? They're in that group. They're in that group. Uh, but still a solid effort, I suppose. And then a good win over the Brisbane Lions to come from behind and win. So a bit of a mixed bag of thrillers for Collingwood. But they still won two out of three. So they're in pretty good form. And that makes me think that I... Well, I think Collingwood is better. I'm not ruling Melbourne out here. But in this dead rubber clash, let's say the Pies win by 10 points. They do tend to win close when they win. So let's say 10 points. Oh, from one thriller to another, is there any point giving a preview of this game? My God. So regardless of form lines, obviously West Coast form line was terrible uh, on the back of that Carlton loss, but this is not a winnable game for West Coast. Even if West Coast were first and Geelong were 18th, I still would have reservations about tipping West Coast here. Not a happy hunting ground at this ground. And I think the last time we played there, it, was, it wasn't last year. I think it was the year before that. We, I don't. I think the average losing margin is like 70 points off the top of my head. I might be making that up. And 2021, they beat us there by 100 and we were in the top eight at the time. So, look, Geelong are coming off a disappointing loss with St. Kilda rampaged in the second half and uh, they ran out of legs to the Cats for sure. Week before that, they were pretty good against Fremantle. Beating Freo in Perth is a pretty good win. Um, so no concerns really from their side. West Coast, diabolical against Carlton. Last game of the season probably mentally checked out. I know I just about have. I'm going to tip the Cats here by oh, 90 points. 89 is the max I can do. 
Richmond versus the Gold Coast Suns um, at the MCG. This one has a little bit of intrigue because the Gold Coast, you know, obviously don't have a great away record. Their last away game, they did win. They've also lost two of their last home games, which is an interesting way to buck the trend that was for the first 18 weeks or whatever it was. Um, the Hardwick Cup. Richmond, I think, you know, they were pretty much butchered against Hawthorne, but did kick four goals in a row in the second quarter and looked like they were putting up resistance. Young side falls away against the stronger Hawthorne outfit. Um, they, they have a bit about them, for sure. And the Suns, you know, I don't know how they'll go into this game. They were quite poor against Melbourne last week, going down by about seven goals. This is an easier opponent. And the MCG factor makes me a little bit wary of Richmond here. Gold Coast, I think, will want to finish this game on a high. I think, um, I think Hardwick will get stuck into the players for, you know, a bad performance last week. And I think he will see it as important to finish the season strongly. So I think if Gold Coast come to this game with the right attitude, they should win, right? So I will say that they win by 20 points and win their second home game of the se- away game of the season, rather. Hawthorne versus North Melbourne at York Park, as it was once known about 20 years ago. Launceston, regardless. Hawthorne, you know, really good form, um, save for, like I said, that challenge from Richmond for a few minutes there where they keep four goals pretty quick. Um, you know, they were able to put their foot to the gas and eventually run away by about nine goals, I think they won by. And, uh, you know, one of the form sides of the competition, this is going to be a tough ask for North Melbourne. North Melbourne were equally very disappointing against the Bulldogs. Again, not getting stuck into a broader narrative about North Melbourne. Young side falling away late in the season. Clarko versus Sam Mitchell here. Is there any chance North challenge them? I think they could challenge them. I think you challenge them. But Hawthorne at the moment is a tough proposition with finals still on the line, um, in a sense. You know, there is still a possibility that if Hawthorne lose this game, Fremantle knock them out. If I'm doing the math on that correctly, I believe that is the case. So still a lot to play for here for Hawthorne. I'd imagine this is a fairly comfortable win by 50 points. Do you think I'm over-egging the cake there? I don't think so. I think Hawthorne's capable. I think if North make a game of this, that's a really good sign. Brisbane versus Essendon at the Gabba. Interesting. I feel like these two sides do produce good games. Let's actually double check that. Okay, so the last time they met at the Gabba was a seven goal win to Brisbane. Uh, They did beat them at the Gabba in 2022. I think that's the one that's sticking in my mind. Other than that, it actually has been kind of one-sided at this ground. Aside from 2018, where that was before Brisbane became good. So, okay, there's a win in 2022 there. Essendon have beaten them there. Um, so is there really any chance Essendon wins this game? I don't think Essendon have been horrendous. I just think they've just done three quarters of the game decently and fallen away late. Against Sydney, they fell away quite poorly, but Sydney are a good team. I'm probably reaching here to talk Essendon up as a chance because they were also out of the finals race and Brisbane are coming off what was kind of a heartbreaking loss to Collingwood where they let their top four chances slip. So... Brisbane will be basically playing for a home final here. I don't think they can make the top four. I don't think that's realistic, if, if at all possible. So I, I just think Brisbane should win this game. I don't know. I don't think even Essendon fans will be doubtful that they're going to challenge them too much. I'd say 30 points. Um, Essendon do have a knack of falling away badly in seasons. Could this be a head-dropping one and where they lose by more? I don't think it matters at this point. With Brisbane having a draw there, percentage is not a factor. Let's just say 30 points, but it could be more and it could be closer. Sydney versus Adelaide at the SCG. Could this be another banana peel game, banana skin game for the Swans here who have won their last two at least, right? They beat, um, obviously, Essendon last week, beat Collingwood the week before that, and starting to play a little bit better for longer in games without putting in a four-quarter performance yet. Um, The Crows, you know, I thought put up a good fight against the Power. They ended up losing despite leading at halftime. Second half, they were kind of well restricted goalless third term seven goals to two in the second half uh, and fell away but again the body of work for Adelaide has been decent I think in the back end of this year and uh, you know save for a couple of bad performances like they, they just were one week or two weeks removed from them beating the Bulldogs by seven goals so I would not be writing this off as a guaranteed Sydney win I think this is a danger game for Sydney I think they can still lose and make top spot we can play around with that but I think you'd also be a brave man to tip an upset here I don't think it's the craziest suggestion that Sydney let this slip because Adelaide are plucky and Sydney are inconsistent and it's going to take a four-quarter performance and I think earlier this year didn't Adelaide get a big lead on Sydney oh we know it happened late last year in this game with Ben Keys. Uh, I think you have to tip the home side here as favorite maybe I'll say 18 points I think it I think it would be a better game 
than maybe the latter position suggests. It's first versus 15th, and I'm genuinely thinking about this game. I'll say Sydney get to an 18-point win, but I don't trust them yet. I actually think they'll come out and play finals well, but this game could be tricky for them. Let's say Sydney win. Now, this could be the most impactful single game because if... I mean, obviously, the Giants are playing for top four. That's big for them. Although, I think, actually, they've locked up top four without playing yet. Is that the case? I'm looking at the ladder here. Can anyone leapfrog the Giants before they've even played a game? Maybe not. Maybe not, because I gave Brisbane the win there, and they're still shy. Hawthorne, I've given the win to, and the Bulldogs can't do it. So, the Giants locked in top four. I didn't realize that. Okay, so... The Bulldogs have a lot to play for here because if the Bulldogs lose this game, Fremantle can leapfrog them if they beat Port Adelaide in the final game of the year, which I believe is possible. So what do we think is going to happen? I think last year they played at this ground. The Bulldogs were up by six goals. GWS came back and won. This was all their talk about how they won at so many different venues, peaking at the right time. That is somewhat true this year as well. They're coming good at the right time with a good win over Fremantle last week. And the Bulldogs were, you know, they butchered North Melbourne. And the Bulldogs, I don't know, this is two good teams converging. Say for the Bulldogs' disappointing performance against Adelaide, they've been red hot. And it's kind of not really a home game either. GWS have to travel a bit, but this isn't a true home game for the Bulldogs. I don't know what to make of this game. This could be the performance that shapes oh, the finals race. It, oh my God, I'm actually really struggling with this one. The Bulldogs have been clinical in their wins. They've been very good, you know, particularly last week. The Giants have won tight games. And against Fremantle, probably put in a more even performance than their previous two come, behind, come from behind victories. Those were good wins too, though. They beat the Brisbane Lions at the Gabba, and they beat Hawthorne. So oh, I don't want to discount either team here. I think I'm going to tip the Bulldogs. But as I said that out loud... I th it felt like it sounded wrong. I think I'm going to tip the Bulldogs here. It's just more gut feel than anything else because logically, you can make an argument either way. The <sighs> toughest game of the round. I'll say the Dogs by 10. Probably, uh, probably just because they have more to play for here. If they lose this, they could miss the finals. Let's say, let's go nine points, the Bulldogs. Carlton versus St Kilda. This is another tricky one and Carlton still have a lot to play for. They need to win this game. Well, at least at the time of the game, they will see it as they needed to win. Because if they lose this and Fremantle lose, I believe Carlton can still make the eight. But St Kilda are a very tricky proposition right now. Ignore the latter position. Look, Carlton were great against West Coast. I thought that, that was a very character-defining win. Not that West Coast is a good team, but obviously look at their injuries. Look at the narrative around them going into that game. And they came out and butchered West Coast. So with a few plays back, I don't know where that sits. Colonel and Mackay listed as one week. Uh, was that bullshit? Are, are they lying? Are they going to be back? And I think my tip might actually sway on that. If Colonel and Mackay come back and, and help Carlton structure up, <sighs> tough one. I actually don't know who to tip here because St. Kilda were very good against the Cats, you know, stormed home in the second half. And, you know, one of the better form sides of the comp on their day, but their worst in the last couple of, months has been poured as well with two bad losses against Adelaide and the Brisbane Lions. So I think this is a danger game here. I reckon I might tip St Kilda. Carlton fans might hate that, but I think I'm going to back in the Saints to just throw a massive spanner in the works here. I think Carlton know, well, the Carlton fans should know that this is not a simple gimme. Uh, the Carlton's midfield with Cripps lifting in the way they did last week. Is that a sign of form coming back? It could be, and that makes me nervous too. This is a real 50-50 for me, and I'm going to tip the Saints to shake things up and keep the door open for Fremantle in the final game of the season against Port Adelaide. Now, Fremantle, I have tipped three weeks in a row, and they have fallen short narrowly each time. They lost to Hawthorne. Sorry, they lost to Essendon by a point. They lost to Geelong at home. They lost to the Giants away. There is still This is still a live game for them, and I think the home crowd will play in their favor. Now, the Power have done not much wrong, and I think they're, they're top two anyway. That is also another factor in this. If the power are top two regardless, that means that they don't really need to play for much in this game, if I'm reading that correctly. Last week's squiggle did me wrong. That's right. Sydney, uh, sorry, the, they gave Collingwood the win last week. I'm just going to cross-reference this with my phone. I believe that's right. So Geelong are on 14 wins, and now they've beaten G uh, West Coast. They'll go up to third. GWS I had losing. Okay. 
So it relies on GWS. If they do lose to the Bulldogs, that Port Adelaide will still be second spot. Now, if the Dogs lose to the Giants, the Giants will go ahead of Port Adelaide, and then that becomes a live top two battle. There is so much going on in this fucking round. <laughs> so in this hypothetical scenario, Port Adelaide have top two already. Um, I actually think Fremantle's going to win, and I am an idiot because I have tipped them three weeks in a row, but I think it's coming out. I think they've been very close in those losses, albeit you know disappointing in pockets. They'd really challenge the Giants, and that is a tough ask right now. And this is home crowd, I think, while, while they fell short against Geelong, I think they're going to beat Port Adelaide, who have not done much wrong lately and were good in the showdown. I'm going to say Fremantle make the finals with a 15-point win Awesome game to end the season. That's what I'm expecting. So that is the way it's going to pan out. Fremantle into eighth. Carlton, assuming they lose to St Kilda, will drop out, which again, I'm not too sure about, but that's the fun of this. Hawthorne play the Bulldogs first round. Brisbane Lions versus Fremantle at the Gabba. Uh, Sydney GWS first week of the finals and the power host Geelong. Now, we can go back and amend these. So let, let, let's play around with what could be the case so what happens if west coast beat you long no i don't care um what happens if well first of all um let's go to this game gws so if gws win that game by 10 points you've got pot adelaide then traveling in the first week of the finals to play the giants and um you know i'm sure they much prefer to play the cats in adelaide so that is a, a crucial game it does mean that if carlton Lose to St Kilda, the Bulldogs still make it. So that is also worth noting. Now let's go to Carlton versus St Kilda here and let's tip that the other way. And Carlton go to seventh and the Bulldogs drop out. Unless Port Adelaide win the final game of the round and that changes it so that Collingwood and Freeman are drop below Collingwood if they lose that game. Well, that would have been four losses in a row and fair enough, you probably deserve to miss finals if you lose four in a row. But I feel like Fremantle is going to win. So that is all the different permutations on the ladder this year. So thank you very much for tuning in, guys. I will be continuing to do weekly tips. I'll do a finals prediction at the start of the final series. Just the tips will continue all through the 2024 final series. So I'm not going anywhere. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. What are your predictions? Because there's so many different ways this round could go and some of them are genuinely 50 50 contests it's shaping up very beautifully but thank you for watching i thank you for being subscribed and i'll see you in the next one cheers